Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. H huge milestone, huh? 30 episodes. Really, honestly, never thought I'd get to 30 episodes of this series. But you know, like, you never know how long you're going to be doing something when you start it. Um, you only know that you want to do it, like, at the moment. And I mean, I have a tendency to start things and then not necessarily want to continue them. I get bored occasionally. So, um, you know, I, I have to really hand it to Vintage Story f for uh, keeping my attention this uh, long. And, you know, the, the series is a lot of work. So I guess what I am going to say uh, right now is um, if you want to hit the like button, and I don't ever do this, but if you want to do that, that would actually help me out and certainly uh, help m keep me vote motivated in terms of the just monolithic amount of work that goes into the Vintage Story series. And who knows, maybe we'll get that tutorial series. I, I, I have no commitments. None. But anyway, <clears throat> um, a good excuse when you are running out of building supplies uh, is to uh, go and, and get some mining done. I mean, this is a game about mining. Um, you know, it's a surprise to say there is quite a big a bit of uh, digging around, so... Um, if you are running out of building supplies, it's a, it's a good excuse to go out and do some mining for some various supplies, copper uh, or any of the various materials. Um, and uh, I chose quartz at the time because I was running out. I had actually blown through all of the quartz that I had dug previously, uh, though I hadn't really dug all that much quartz. Um, you know, I didn't know how much I was going to need at the time. But uh, nonetheless, I, I marked it out. And we actually have quite a lot of rich quartz veins very close to us. So um, though in the beginning of this series, I thought that I had a pretty poor world um, generation. Now I have uh, re-reflected on that. And I think actually we, we did pretty well. Um, and I think also with Vintage Story, you might just have to travel a little bit farther if you want to get some of those more unique biomes. Um, but I, I, I was, I'm glad I stuck with the limitations of this world because I knew that, uh, you know, if I did, it would be more interesting and who knows, like it might just be that I have to do a bit more searching around for those things. And that was certainly true. So anyway, we're, um, doing a bit more farming. I'm getting more seeds. I am trying to keep those seeds, but, um, for the most part, I'm just kind of trying to like replenish the garden with what they are. I have some bone meal saved up but I haven't used it yet. I probably should just do that. Should really deal with this hole that's just kind of hanging out there that's pretty close to our base. But I wanted to get some more copper. Um, not just like copper, but also just dig around for various materials. I'm still trying to find like a really good copper vein so I don't have to, you know, I, I'm not in need of copper for a long time. Copper, I mean, it used to be our, um, you know, our most common substance and we used it for pretty much everything. And now copper is, uh, well, uh, suitably it is used for just about everything. It's, it's what we need for all of the bronze materials. So, um, you know, if I, if I decide, you know, I have some of the materials for one kind of bronze, I still require copper. So it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt, um, how necessary copper is for everything. But I also appreciate it and respect it because it means that uh, a base material that we, you know, it, it stays relevant into the mid and late game. Um, I'm not sure if copper is going to be necessary for any of the iron smithing once we get to that stage. Um, but I, I'm going to say it probably isn't. Um, so I don't know. That might be an entirely new thing. And never mind steel. Steel is an entirely new thing yet again. But <clears throat> I found this zinc. Zinc was going to be useful for making brass, I believe. And I want, I did want um, to make a lot of brass because I wanted to make a lot of uh, light sources for our base. And I also found some tin. And you know, remember when uh, tin was a very... It uh, was in quite short supply, so uh, I was a little bit, you know, tickled to to find some and, and just kind of rooting around in the ground. Um, so it's it's just kind of a nice surprise. But um, weirdly, I, I'm honestly wanting for more uh, copper veins at this point than, than anything else because it really is just like the most valuable material. But I'm marking out, I'm trying to make a habit of marking out quartz with a different symbol on the... On the map so I know what it is and I, I kind of just want to like clean spend a bit of time and clean up the map because there's a lot of icons all over the place and I don't know what necessarily they all mean 
I also don't know how extensive I've dug in those regions. I kind of want to set up some quick buttons too. Um, this is something I kind of looked into. You can set up some really handy um, shortcut keys that set, you know, throw down specific kind of icons for, uh, you know, whatever your, your needs are. We're still working with bloomeries. We're still, uh, I was just checking to see if anything, if I had set anything to, to, to um, set, I guess, I don't know, um, bake. Um, and I hadn't, so I, I had to, <laughs> that's a good excuse to bake some stuff kind of not happy with that little zone um i don't like all the the holes in the ground it, it's a little bit ugly i don't know how to deal with that though and i don't really want to have to like make another zone for pit kilns but pit kilns are always just kind of a pain in the butt i really do wish there was some kind of manufactured or uh, helpful thing that uh, you could use to 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 bake stuff that didn't require digging holes kind of like the the bloomeries but more for baking like a literal kiln i kind of wish that was a thing we could make maybe in the future i know that there's quite a lot of stuff planned for vintage story and it's you know far from finished but i like it really does feel like a complete game i mean i've gotten quite a lot of hours out of this game as it is now and uh, i know the last uh, update was very extensive but i'm looking forward to seeing uh, how this game develops uh, and what they have planned i know they have some really interesting stuff planned um with you know electricity and uh, you know kind of almost semi steampunk future tech um so that should be a lot of fun and i also know there's there's already weird weird tech stuff like uh, teleporters and stuff but i i have yet to dabble with any of that um so I'm continuing to work on the greenhouses. Like, as I say, that's going to be, uh, you know, the, the source of a lot of my um, work for now uh, and for the maybe the next episode. And then after uh, maybe the one after that, I will finally be done with the greenhouse and I can just uh, it'll just be a source of food and uh, various materials, much mostly uh, the flax, but also berries once I get berry bushes going. Um, I, my brain tells me like, don't, you know, reserve the soil for, for vegetables and any kind of plant material, but I, I still kind of want to reserve a, f a couple of, uh, of these greenhouse rooms for, um, for berries because they are going to be very useful for animal husbandry. But I don't know something about, uh, you know, I just like, I, I need to till the soil. That's it's a farm. I need to till the soil and uh, berry bush bad. Um, but uh, that, that is incorrect brain. You're giving me the wrong information there. So I don't know. Um, I am slowly but steadily putting a road around our, um, you know, our, our main area, uh, so I can travel around a little bit quicker. I don't know how much roading I'm going to be doing, like how many roads I want to be building to like other locations, like mines, for instance. Uh, it's a nice idea and we're officially that's that's that road built over our um, what was our, our previous home and also mine um, it's a nice idea of putting roads around uh, but it is very time consuming it's also very very resource uh, you know like it, it takes a lot of resources to make these roads um, and I generally like the building materials for um, for, for building our, you know, like we, we've, we, we have a lot of needs for uh, those, those materials. So I, I don't necessarily want to use them on roads, though the roads are actually useful. They do actually kind of, um, you know, snap up your, your speed a little bit in terms of, of uh, you know, moving around and, and you can run at a really nice clip on, on those roads. So it is actually worth it. And maybe once I've built literally everything else I need, with uh, some of the stone and stuff, uh, then then I can think about maybe throwing some roads um, to to places that I often go to, like mines and stuff. But uh, you know, the mines uh, they're 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 ones I, I tend to go and then claim all the materials and then leave. So I, I don't know if there will be like commonplace mines. So here is your um, firewood arc, and I I have a question to you, the viewer, is. What is an aesthetic way of placing firewood? What would you say is an aesthetic way to place firework? Now, that being said, um, like if you're trying to place firewood in an aesthetically pleasing way, do you um, kind of try and keep to rigid, like real world rules? 
Is that what is aesthetic or is it more aesthetic to, to pile them in an interesting way? This is a question that me and uh, my, my friends uh, were asking and, uh, you, know, I, you know, I know people who apparently have had to pile firewood in real life. That is not something I have ever had to do. So uh, their contention was flat at the top. You just pile it in a way in which it is easy to grab the firewood. But my contention was, no, having it sloped is more interesting and more artistically, uh, you know, the composition of it is just going to be more interesting to look at as a, uh, as a human being. But the argument continued, and, and uh, so therefore this firewood pile changed and morphed over time <laughs> to something that was closer to real life. But, you know, I, I do think that uh, though art does imitate real life i think at some point uh, the artist must make some kind of concession or uh you know compromise reality after all art is an abstraction of reality and so therefore um it doesn't necessarily have to be practical and if i was pi piling firewood in real life i would certainly want to make some compromises so that i was looking at something a bit more interesting than just a pile, uh, uh, you know, straight up block of wood. But I don't know. I would like to hear from you, the viewer. I would even like to see diagrams. Um, you know, give me, give me a PowerPoint. How would you pile wood that is both practical and realistic in a way that makes sense? Um, you know, maybe, maybe you'd uh, try, try the Fibonacci spiral for your firewood. I don't know how you'd manage that, but if you could. I would certainly applaud the effort and uh, you know maybe there's a way you could do that and it would also be possible to grab firewood without the whole thing collapsing i would i would definitely applaud that maybe a jenga tower would be interesting although then then it is just kind of a big old block of wood and not very interesting so i don't know maybe you could arrange it in in a way that uh, depicts something personal from your memory or or your you know family maybe you'd like to arrange it in in a way that you know it, it resembles a loved one i don't know i i'd love to see that um but in any case i would love to also hear from you how would you arrange your firewood i know we're talking a lot about this but that's because i'm spending a lot of time making torch holders <laughs> really this was literally an hour i don't think i've ever done well okay i'll tell a, i tell a lie i have done um very time consuming work in other games and i actually appreciate work work in quotation marks um you can't see my my hands but they are making the, the bunny symbols you see um work in a video game is actually very satisfying um, because it makes, you know, it, me it means your your dopamine hit of completing a task is a little bit more nuanced. You know, uh, sometimes you uh, want to have a pizza and sometimes you want to have something with a bit more uh, like subtle tones uh, for your dopamine hit. Uh, I know that w w you didn't expect maybe food analogies when it comes to dopamine hits, but, you know, I think it's, it's fair to say that, um, you know, instant gratification is nice. But sometimes it's nice also to spend time on something that is not necessarily instantly fun, but is, uh, you know, compelling and, and also satisfying in its completion. So that's where uh, to making torch holders comes in. And also, one could argue, piling firewood, certainly a, a task was never uh, as valuable as that um, or, or as valid. So... Um, you know, we're making a lot of torch holders is really all I'm saying and also piling a lot of firewood But uh, I, I've I've filled the second room with torch holders More or less although um, there's a big old gap in the middle there uh, When it comes to you know shedding light that is certainly going to matter um, And I also think that uh, temporal storms have been slightly updated and, and I'm not sure how much I like that but uh, you'll see in the next episode that they, they feel a little bit spicier. Um, I needed a bit more, I needed some sticks so we could actually fill those torch holders with some sticks. Or sorry, torches. <laughs> Not, I mean, I guess torches are just sticks, but anyway. Um, and you know, these trees, uh, I do plant the seeds outside for convenience sake and eventually they do grow. So 
I was able to grab some uh, grab some sticks from those. I, I know compelling uh, material here, but you know that is what I did. And though I do, um, you know, kind of like give you a, a short form of of my tasks, I do like to include pretty much all of the stuff I did in, in its short form. Bloomery is done. Let's get the glass. Let's. Uh, those are. I think I probably at this point have enough glass to finish. All of the greenhouses however my main bottleneck is actually clay stone or basically any kind of stone um, it, it's very uh, taxing on my materials to, uh, to to make any kind of building so I, I basically never have enough to finish um, which which sucks at this point um, I wanted to take a break from a lot of our normal tasks are making torches and I actually I really want to start um, collecting fat uh, so now that I have a bow and now that I am I'm pretty comfortable with it uh, I wanted to, to go and hunt something but I'm trying to what I'm really trying to do is wander far away uh, as far you know as far as away as possible or, or that I am comfortable with um, from our base so that um, the animals I'm, I'm killing are not ones I would ever really consider as candidates for animal husbandry um, so that's, hence I'm, I'm doing a lot of far reaching exploration here and, uh, I've actually discovered some new, uh, a new biome and I'm pretty sure that is in this episode and, uh, make a new friend. There's a new friend, both to Vintage Story and to me. And, uh, we'll, I'll save that for the very end of this episode though. So there, there's your, there's your, uh, you know, uh, gimme your, <laughs> your, your little, your little treat at the end of the episode. As well as your second reminder, you might want to hit that like button. I'll give you, I'll remind you again later. It's fine. We'll, we'll get through this. Um, this is the the me shill, shilling out portion of Vintage Story. I found this weird little tomb here. And I do think it's a tomb because it's got these really creepy granite um, kind of skull blocks. And I did uh, collect those, uh, destroying the tomb, of course. So, uh, you know, undoubtedly I am now haunted by something. That's a joke, by the way. Uh, someone would actually believe that there is some kind of mechanic. But I also found this other creepy uh, little dungeon that has these things called locusts. And locusts are one of the... They're a very strange thing in Vintage Story. They're, they're like one of the few signs of Vintage Story kind of breaching the gap of realism in favor of some kind of video game enemy. But these are like strange light bulb bugs and they are really creepy. I just, I don't like them basically at all. I kind of hate them. Um, but uh, this, you know, I, I had to come in here and, and deal with it. There's a nest in there, a locust nest that I had to deal with. And, uh, you know, the bow is really paying its way. It's really making itself worthwhile. So um, I'm, I'm happy about that. Certainly I got through this without taking too much damage. There's the locust nest there. It looks like a cage. Um, and I did get something from it. I think it is spawning something there. Yeah, it's spawning a couple locusts while I'm trying to destroy it. It works basically like Minecraft. You want to get rid of the little spawner um, while you're also dealing with the enemies. I, I'm not sure if you can get anything from these locusts. I think maybe you can, but I, I, I tried like the whole knife technique to uh to to cut their corpses for for supplies and i didn't really get anything so i'm not sure what the deal is there and i also didn't look up look it up either so that was that was my bad um i i knew it was probably gonna die soon so i i figured well why not just like venture down into the deep one of the um advantages i guess to um you know having no penalty for death is I, I can make these kind of decisions um, and, and check out do a little bit of dangerous exploration because you know there's some fun stuff you can discover and I really don't know much about the underground uh, outside of some of the materials that can be gained I don't know like how scary things get and I haven't been very close to the bottom although we are we are pretty close there we're about 30 blocks at this point from the very bottom of Vintage Story. So I'm not sure what happens then. I've never seen the like, what what what's at the very ground level, the bedrock of Vintage Story. I don't know what that looks like. I am, I'm intrigued, but I actually managed to survive all of that, if you can imagine that. 
um, and decided to try and escape and, and go home. I mean, like, as much as I, I am grateful for uh, the, the zero penalty death, um, I don't necessarily want to exploit that, and I do want to take the game seriously in, in its, its uh, difficulty, so I figured I'd try and get home without death. That uh, path there, that empty path, is just I, I ran out of road and uh, was unable to finish the road, so uh, hence, hence why there's like a big old hole strip there. I'm sure that was obvious. I did get a boon for all of my dangerous dungeon delving, though. I got a free extra lantern. So that was actually very, uh, very good for the second floor. Um, and I, I finished making these torches uh, since I had the sticks and grass that I needed. And, you know, I did, uh, you might have caught a glimpse there that I did kill a sow, um, a, a pig, basically, and got, a, a, got some extra fat. Uh, I'm not going to make any of the um, automation stuff until I, I know I have enough fat to even attempt and... I'm finally making use of uh, horsetail polis, so that's that's nice. It's basically a bandage, and it gets your health back. That is something I'm going to be taking advantage of in this and future episodes. And I actually I've been making kind of a habit of carrying cattails on me, um, and like if I see cattails, I'll I'll cut them down because um, then if I find any uh, horsetail polis. Or sorry, just horsetail. Then I then I can make the polis with them, and so there's a a reason and a purpose to carry the uh, cattails on on me on my person. So uh, it's it's actually really nice that I you know I now have a method of not dying or you know recovering from near death. I did set myself on fire though. That's a first. Um, and you know jumping in the water actually does uh, remedy that. So. Uh, but yeah, I was close to death again, so I was going to need to use more bandages. But um, this, uh, this floor now actually looks really nice now that, uh, now that it's fully lit. And I think that this is about as close to fully lit as I care to make it. I think that's pretty good. I, it could definitely be better, but uh, I'm, I'm content with this. So uh, I did at some point forget to close the door for my garden. Um, so there is a couple of uh, eaten plants, unfortunately, which is just that just sucks. Uh, sucks to do that. It sucks to see the signs of your own inept ineptitude, your your uh, ineptedness. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I think. I ho I hope. I hope you know what I'm saying. <laughs> And we are actually starting to build a stockpile of food now, um, both of m meat and vegetables, which is nice. Uh, and this was our f the first time I slept in probably weeks or even months. Um, so I, I just like didn't really have anything I wanted to get done in the night. So I am using up quite a bit of quite a few of those arrows. They uh, have a high rate of return, but not not like you know infinite so i am starting to actually blow through some of our arrows and i am a little bit aware of the fact that i am running through that bow i have two more bows cooking on and i say cooking but they're just drying out on a, on a tool shelf so that is uh, good to know good useful um that I, I'll, I'll have a bow when this one breaks but still i'm not looking forward to that because the bows are pretty expensive they require like some pretty hefty stuff um, including resin and I am trying to uh, make a habit of collect resin when I see it um, but all the same it's you know it's more it, it's resources and resources um, there none of them are free nor are any of them really easy to obtain in vintage story partly why I like the game but also it can be a bit daunting when you realize oh yeah uh, this thing is gonna break and then I'm gonna have to use up more of my valuable resources to, to make another one sucks. So I'm pretty sure that is a wolf and I think I think I get away with this. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to be a pretty good shot with the bow. I actually really appreciate the mechanics with it. It's 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 not um, super big ask to 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 kind of uh, aim your shots. This wolf unfortunately took a little tumble off a cliff and uh, found itself dying by um, semi-natural causes. Uh, and that actually reflects badly on the corpse. Uh, you'll see maybe at the very top there that 
the wolf was crushed and so therefore I'll, I'll get less resources which is a, just a darn shame because I, I, I'm not sure if that reflected um, badly on obtaining some of the uh, the fat if there was any to obtain so that's really what I want more than anything else but um, from my exploration I found our first uh, volcanic biome which is there's a lot of basalt and obsidian um, hanging around which is really cool I'm not sure what the obsidian is good for even after having looked up its uses it doesn't I, I really don't have an explanation on that I know uh, I mean in real life ish maybe that there were thing tools or uh, spearheads or you know arrowheads made from obsidian but I don't actually know how common that was that might be another one of those little kind of fictional fantasy gimmies that uh, are, are often used and, and not actually reflective of uh, real life but I found this merchant he actually has a uh, some pretty good stuff and he also uh, wants for for things that are very um, obtainable so I marked them on the map as being a good merchant uh, which I should really be a bit more descriptive about those things but whatever I uh, I, I want to come back to this guy and and maybe um, give him some stuff so I, I didn't mine this obsidian, I just marked it on the map, but I might come back at some point and try and figure out what that is. But anyway, as promised, here comes our new friend um, coming up in this next scene, and also a new addition to Vintage Story, which is a bear. Yeah. Bears are, are a thing. I don't know if they were, I think they are new to Vintage Story. Anyway, they're they're pretty ghastly. Anyway, if you enjoyed this episode, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.